dire team pick. remaining. We have ourselves a draft between Alliance and OG. On one side, uh, OG so far with two uh, victories on the board, and on the other side, Alliance without a victory on the board. Huh. And Dying these series, they are so important. And Alliance really wants to make it into that top four, and they need to take series off of one of these teams in the upper for echelon at the moment. And OG is one of those teams. Uh, we're joined by Purge on the big screen. I got Kyle and Moxie here in the draft. Actually, we're already two picks in. Uh, Purge, I'm going to let you go first. We got the openings with Five the shaker and the puck remaining. and the coddle and the pango. What are you thinking? All right, so all the good counter push heroes, um, you know, these are both beneficial for both teams because you can slow down your opponent's game by delaying the time that it takes for your tier one tower to die. So both teams will be able to have some solutions there, some good team fight, obviously. Uh, really? The Pango is maybe Damn. the most surprising to, I guess, as the the pick here, because mm -hmm. um, it's a little early and they get to pick the counter pick on the puck, but you know, you play around it, so it's not yeah. super bad. It's, uh deceivingly similar to an opener we saw a couple hours ago. Wonder if that was prepped, if that's something they've gotten from scrimming each other, or if they just saw it in the match and wanted to use it. Um, whereas OG, Ten seconds massive remaining. amounts of team fight, global mobility, wave clear, big fan. They also ban out the bat. Kind of makes sense. We've been teasing Alliance for picking it three consecutive games, but Nigma did beat it with arguably the best Slark in the world twice. Uh, if you're not comfortable with it, it might not be something you want to do yourself. And maybe they protected them from themselves, you know. Well, Lib is also a beast on that. Radiant team band. Oh, that's true. Maybe Topson just really didn't want to play Slark. <laughs> nah, the other reason I they kid, picked I up kid. the the other reason they picked up the Slark right was because of the fact they were picking Wraith King every single game to uh, counter if they get all those. Ten seconds remaining. That was just annoying now, and he's really. really Five like seconds it in the pool if you know someone's very comfortable with OG are also arguably one of the greediest macro teams in Dota. Like, they're always playing, like, all the lanes. They're running at you. Keep running at you. Yep, I think, um... Dying you said down. that, uh... One of the things is don't panic. And OG comes with crazy stuff. Do you consider Pangalier in the first two to be something that Alliance should panic or should worry about, should counter in their draft, or you feel like Puck already is doing that by himself, herself? It's no, I, I don't think, like, if it's like a, remaining. I mean, Pango's already been pretty flexible as a core. I mean, more like when they take a hero Five that's consistently remaining. seen as a core and then they make it a support mm -hmm. and it provides like a weird game state. It's like the, it's, it's harder to read the game then because it's something that you haven't played again. Um, and we've seen DP support a couple times now, but that was the first thing that really surprised me that they did, that you know, they pushed themselves in a, in a weird comfort zone, kind of, and they had some weaknesses in other area. But as long as you understand how the hero fits and what their Great. weaknesses are, yeah. you can solve that with items or by avoiding bad game situations. And the better players are going to be able to do that more flexibly. So we haven't really seen any Dying weird shit out of OG just yet, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it's coming. It'll be there. Now, I'll have to give them my copy of... Uh... The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Draft later. It's got the words, don't panic, and nice friendly and letters on the cover. always bring a towel. It's very true. Mm -hmm. And they still have um, Naga Siren available in the pool, which is kind of interesting, Ten considering how much remaining. it devalued that. Well, it's the Monkey King first two ban. I think without that available Five in the pool, they remaining. just don't really have Value the synergy. This would like, have been the perfect time to play well, the sound bite of Kyle saying, why is it wet? But it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, the Naga, um, you have the Minus Armor in lane, and like then you have Orbicraft and Monkey King. Mm -hmm plus the later combo. Like, it's a good lane, and it's an awesome combo. Mm -hmm. Without it, I, I just don't think they care not as much. Um, this sets up OG 
for the Furion. Just saying. No, no the Creep. camp's already taken out. They out. Nice, good job of testing fine. you guys. The Beastmaster, though, is still available. Yeah, he is. I know you have to check just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. You're always throwing me under the bus. It's so easy, though. You basically crawl <laughs> underneath it yourself. I just lie oh. down on the road. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have got. Uh, yeah, we have got the eye. I think this. Are we I'm, setting up for something like uh, Luna? Or no, please no. God no. I have to say, I've seen some Luna, and I've been told that I O and Luna is okay together. Radiant team pick. We're not going for okay. In we are not. When you're, but. when you're playing versus OG, you can't go for an okay draft. Wasn't this. that what exactly what Midwest said? said yeah, we played the lines. <laughs> they're an we they're okay, okay team. team. That was not yeah. a good yeah. one. Yeah. Weaver. All right, this, this alliance lineup's fast, but very squishy. I love the Ember pick. We saw Liquid first to the Coddle Ember. I'm surprised it's actually still in the pool. Um, yeah, like the pace OG can play with, like, they're just so strong, the fights. And then, yeah, I was going to say, alliance, you have to play real fast and kill stuff. You can't kill DK. It's a point and click yep. stun against Weaver Puck. This is great. There's quite a few magic nukes on Alliance side right now too. That ended up being one of the things that really hurt Dragonite the last game we just saw. Was that in that like mid game phase, if all the heroes are there and they use their magic nukes, he just dies. So they don't have that many coming um, no. from the Alliance side just yet. Weaver's going to be effective against Pango at least uh, in terms of like dodging things and um, rolling thunder is not that scary, but Ember slight chains is scary. Ten Dragonite can be scary, remaining. so. I, I just don't feel super, super comfortable with Five Weaver. It, I it feel like it does pretty good in the laning stage, but it has issues in ultra late game yep. sometimes. So, or often, I would say. Yeah, I just don't like Wisp with Weaver as a pairing. Um, yeah. When you think Wisp, you think, okay, something that benefits from having a fountain, right? And typically spread damage as well. Something like that's both durable and fast. And like, like Gyro, you turn mana into faster farming. Yeah. You deal a hell of a lot of damage, whereas Weaver, like, you're not really playing with the wisp. You're also very squishy. You don't. You're not a frontline hero. You Weaver want to dart in and to out. Exactly. You're not looking to just stand your ground yeah. and fight. The the best wisp partners are like the tinies, the spens, the gyros. They just run at you, but they're faster and stronger than you expected. And uh, you can't do that with a weaver in this game. But we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe there's something else that you can do that with still. It could be offline fine. weaver. That's true. Core wisp. I don't even know though. Puck mid. It's oh. more likely puck mid because it's limp. Yeah. But into DK. Yeah. Like, but I also feel like Nico Baby Weaver, I feel like Nico Baby can do better. No, yeah, you're. It's comfort zone, to your point, but I just. I always. I'm afraid it's the same thing we saw. And I know we've been memeing on the bat, but it wasn't the bat as much as it's. You're putting, I think, your most skilled player and the Ten pace setter for your team in limp on a hero that has an unfavorable matchup and Five is, has, is answered throughout the game. And that's the issue here if you put him on Puck. It's I one feel of the, like, sorry, go ahead. I, I feel I feel like if they put Ember in the safe lane with Coddle and Weaver lanes against him, it's actually Dying not that bad for pick. Weaver IO. Because outside of like you can dodge Illuminates easier with Sakuchi. Ember normally just does slight harass to harass his opponent's down, but IO regen can offset that a bit, so I think that could be maybe what they're going for. Is this a mid Grim? There is a chance that it's Pango 4, right? Uh yeah, but Absolutely. I I think it's more like... Uh, you got DK, I guess. It is? Ten seconds submitted. remaining. It's OG. It could literally it could be anything, yeah. honestly. Let's be really honest, guys. We could see Five a good support DK. Remain. It just, yep. Support yep. Ember? The OG, Harry Cottle? OG line is just so scary. Like, you have these three cores that are full divide, two supports that make them better and stronger and provide a lot of utility. And the Alliance draft, like, I'm struggling to see the last pick that brings it together. I actually think they need that Meepo Alchemist type hero because right now they're not in control of the win condition. All of their heroes are answered by the OG draft. Well, they got 50 seconds to come up with an answer to uh, OG's draft. Yeah, the, the, the key to this draft, if you will. I think Alliance is one of the only teams that so far in this, in this DPC league has consistently picked their mid hero in the first two. If this is indeed a limp puck. I mean, maybe they were trying to do the 
like, hey guys, Puck could be anywhere, but it's like you have to like do it once in a while, throw it, throw it in as yeah. a support role to like really make them. But like, I, I, I don't necessarily see Alliance being as willing to do that. Yeah. That's what kind of makes this, it's, it's like gives the upper hand to teams like Secret so you, you just, or OG, because you just really don't know what they're going to do. Because they do ev do everything. Yeah, you got to you gotta have something to back uh, back up the claims of, uh, well, a flex pick the in blood. this case. Yep, let's see. The Beastmaster yeah. coming out. So yeah, Puck uh, mid. Beastmaster into Pango, Ember, Adiga, man. You know, it's with Beastmaster. These are two in pretty incredible heroes. I just wish it wasn't a Weaver. Mid Grimstroke! All right. DK off lane. I... Pango. I mean... <sighs> I like it. It's really good against Puck. Are you waiting for me to say something? <laughs> I want to hear the final thoughts from Purge first. Uh, uh, I, uh, Grimstroke is mid, uh, that's all I, that's all I know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what the lane matchups are, but DK against, um, the, the harass of the enemy should be pretty good, I guess, so, that's weird, I don't know, I, I'd have to stare at it for another three minutes. Answers. That's okay. You can stare at it for however long the game lasts. We'll be back to you, uh, back uh, with you after the game. What are you thinking again? I think OG, they have favorable matchups in all the lanes. And unless Wisp Weaver just crush and they take total map control three towers by 12 minutes, it's just such a hard game for Alliance. I feel like they have to play so much better. It's DK Ember like, hey, we're going to stun that guy. He's real squishy. He died. All right, cool. Next. It just, I'm not seeing it, but I'm hoping the Lions can surprise me. I mean, guns win games. And also, I just, I don't have faith in this Weaver. I hate to say it, but I just, I don't see how he fits into the grand picture. Like, it looks like it's just way too hard to execute this draft, so I'm gonna have to go with OG. Yeah. All right, well, it's an opening game. How is it going to play out? What oh, form are these teams in? We're gonna find out together with Odie Pixel. <laughs> Ah, thank you very much, Chief. Yes, ready to go here with Alliance versus OG Prime. We've heard the panel's opinion on the draft. They seemingly favor what OG have here. Uh, what, what sort of your thoughts? I mean, can Alliance do this? They do have Nico Baby on the Weaver, and this guy's a bit of a beast on the carry Weaver. Yeah, he's just got, they pretty much all got all their eggs in one basket. They've got the Beastmaster aura, they got the IO, they're amping up the one guy, and it's the Weaver. That's the only concern I really have. It's not that I doubt an Eagle Baby's capabilities on the hero. I think if Limp turns himself potentially into a right-clicking core, that this could be more doable from the side of Alliance to scale like they need to. I think both lineups have playmaking potential, so despite whoever comes out to an early advantage, if somebody does, uh, there will definitely be some brawling to come back into the game. A lot of gold presence on both sides. You got Keeper Light Recall, you got the Relocate from Wisp. So it's going to be a lot about these like micro movements. Yeah, and on the, the sort of side of OG, what obviously the, the, the tops and Grimstroke coming in again. You, you sort of look what it's playing up against. You, you think this is a game where topson has got a, a pretty good future ahead of him in this match? I would just say they have a nice balance of the guys that go in begins. and guys that sit back. I think Grimstroke's very much enabled by the teammates that he has. He has a lot of nice ink swell targets, even in the support Pangolier. It's a great person to just throw in the middle of the fight. And it's going to be really difficult, I think, to get on top of him. And it's going to be a lot on Limp as well as Nico Baby to manage to kind of sneak back. Yeah, we'll see how well Limp can uh, do it mid-match up. I mean, Limp Puck, definitely one of the, the finest pucks in the, in the, the next industry. Level play. Well, we'll see how well a, a, a lead he can get against Thompson, or if Thompson is going to cause issues for him in the laning stage. I mean, let's start looking at the side lanes. We, we started here from the panel, some of the, the strengths they thought were, were going on for the duos. Is, is there any sort of matchup you think that's going to be hard for one Get of the teams to it. I'm, I'm definitely curious about bottom, because as we see, Seb actually levels his stun uh, level you one, just to make sure that Fox and Illuminate uh -huh. hits. I think Nico Baby's gonna struggle a bit because once he gets some points up in the armor, Seb, he's not really gonna care about the damage that Weaver's outputting, and thus he can kind of just play up in his face. Weaver's got pretty low base armor. Uh, I, I just, I love the DK pick. I think it was the best pick of the draft. Basically said, we have a super tanky stunner that you can't do anything to, that can find any of your squishy cores out. 
And sort of the, the overall game, how does it look for a carry Weaver? You know, is, is this a game where Eco Baby's going to have a lot of difficulties ahead of him when you, you see what he's playing into? Dyer's I legitimately don't know what item build he's going to go for. Like, I would lean towards Maelstrom S and Y because you have a lot of enablers to keep you alive and you just need to survive through the disables uh, that Steph's going to dish out with maybe like a quick follow up from the Grimstroke. But he might just have to go for that early BKB. And if you've got a Wisp behind you and a Beast Master like, buffing you up, that's just not what I would deem like a future just, point. Yeah. You know, you're excited to go BKB second item on Weaver. <laughs> I think one thing that's uh, definitely going to be fun to keep our eyes on this game when we look over to the carry of OG Mib1 on his Ember. But we've seen it from Mib1 in these games. He, he likes to bring something a little new to the table sometimes with his builds. Do you think there's going to be any sort of inventive uh, items coming out from Mib1 this game? I would be pleasantly surprised if he goes for the boot to travel Midas. <laughs> on the Ember, uh, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be a Desolator, I would like to see, as his like, damage item. They've got a lot of magic damage, and they've also got low armor force. Weaver starts with three or four, Puck starts with about zero, and uh, he can really make it so that they just get blown up before they can even react. She caught him. Again, just still seven stacks. You're getting a lot of damage done here. Over with the Dragon Tail, and still no points to the passive, just going full on the, the offensive here, Seth. In the, the breath, instead of course with the stun. CSO down bottom, seeing Nico Baby not over any trouble at all. 16 last hits against Steph 12 and 3. And uh, the mid matchup for now, uh, pretty even here between Limp and Topson. I guess both heroes with solid nukes to just sort of bounce the lane back and forth between each other. Uh, I would imagine mid pretty much the trade. They both have reliable ways to CS, they can both avoid the other person's nukes. I don't, I don't see how they could ever really deny each other much at all. Uh, this is interesting. You don't Just all, but I guess On the top half of the map, S4. Still finding, you know, not quite as much as Seb is on the, the respective offline on the other side, but still not, not getting completely zoned out. Nice FNG. FNG taking the time to move over towards the mid. Limp is trying to set him off the top. And Thompson is going to inch well himself, forcing Limp to, to jump away. Keep his distance. But Thompson is very low right now. Phantom's embrace and the new going to be dodged very nicely uh, by Limp with the phase shift. And Thompson. Sorry, has got in the region. He has. So Thompson's going to have to take the walk all the way back to base. So uh, a nice bit of pressure there from FNG on the mid, giving Limp a, a free wave or so. Yeah, the pace of the game tends to ramp up a lot around the five minute catapults and bounties, and I've been seeing a lot of mids who end up not getting the bottle refill at four minutes choose to just go back to base. Seems pretty common nowadays, so don't, uh, don't fret if you find yourselves in your games in a, in a similar spot. Back to lane now, no tail whilst the, the space was there. XP wasn't missed out upon. See, for the five minute range, no tail. Step up, down, bottom. Okay, baby, trying to get the rest of onto Saxa. None will hold him back. Does he want to try and chase the pole? He won't. Start to have to think about these five minute rounds already. Oh, he's got the river head, Benji. Make sure that he's able to pick it up before no tail is. And then coming across to get that one on their half. Witness two for two on the bounty. For my cost. Just what I've been waiting for. All in all, a, a very close and passive start. Nobody yet to fall here five minutes in between Alliance and OG. I like the skill build for Member. They don't really have any aggressive potential because Tangliers are relatively weak in high position. And the fact that you have this really strong laning, independent Ember Spirit allows for you to have this Pango. So he's kind of just choosing to go for the constant har harass with Flight, but then he's going to still enable his own farm and also ways to deal with the way that the master can't really set up any tower pushes by going for no points in this. Sitting around the mid lane again, FNG. Come across again, Elias. Just having the superior control around these power ins. Limp to grab that DD up. And uh, now they have got to be, gotta be on the ready here. He has hit level 6, but actually not opting for a point in the Dream Coil quite yet, Lem. 
Huh. I guess that does speak to the pace of the game. Both teams, I think once they get to those timings, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, from 100 to, or zero to 100 real quick. But as of right now, it looks like, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody skip ult on Puck, but if the uh, Earthshaker intends on staying mainly around the Beastmaster top, then I don't think he will ever have the solo kill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and skipping it, it again. Yeah, hits level seven, still not putting a point in the Dream Coil. I mean, as you say, if he doesn't need it, he doesn't need it. This is just confidence on a hero to go this really long skill build. We saw the DK bottom, the the puck skipping a coil here. These guys have definitely been in this spot before, and they just know what to expect coming in the next few minutes. <laughs> Top lane, next four, now with the next four, putting a lot of pressure onto Mipon. I mean, Mipon's just out of mana. He's just there. Ooh, case the cut. He's got a fist to get the rim out, but he hasn't got enough to jump to it. I mean, uh, that Necro foot just destroyed Mipwon. He just slowed oh, it just down. 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 himself, getting beaten down, and the mana taken out. Yeah, the board's been there. Got to play aggressive in onto Thompson. TP back up coming in for OG. FNG's there on the side with Limp to back him up. Got the DD as well here on Limp. He wants to get back in there. Seven under FNG finds the setup. Any damage coming through the stand. He's going to illuminate Limp, still able to jump in and clean up the mid kill. Thompson goes down, and then you see TP coming over from OG. They're bringing in Mipwon. They're going to try and get the catch on to Limp, but Limp, he's more than fine, of course, with this skill build. As you say, no points in chain. So they don't have the setup, and Limp's able to get out of there. I like what Lions is doing. These early moves are really nice. They're pressuring multiple points on the map. They're getting some nice kills, but yet, Dyer's OG still has a lead. You can see that all, four, all three cores farming really well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That, that haste rune just lagging to get straight back down to the bottom lane. Um, we'll see him farm up the blink on the DK to make sure that OG's got that solid initiation. I take what I mentioned there as a great target for Topsy to buff up with the ink swell and have that first jump in. You know, Limp at, uh, at his level eight, uh, holding on to the point. Does have the point ready to drop. This is an opportunity to get active potentially on the side lanes with the dream coil. The best thing for OG that the Beastmaster wore, even though it got the kill on the Ember, it didn't result in a tower or loss of farm. The Pango took Dyer's over the lane, tower is still under farm the lane. and uh, we might see a repeat here at 4. Again, just this move uh, from the Necro books just causing such an issue here for Midpoint. It's just easy kills any time he shows in the lane here. Two times now, S4. Just, uh, he's loving life up there. Down bottom, they're going to try and make a aggressive move on to Steph. Standing up with the Dream Coil. Have they got enough damage to break down this Dragon Eye? Steph tries to turn holds back to one of them, but it's not enough to stop him from going down. Tips out as well here from Nico, baby. Top lane. Been hunting in the trees to think of get no tail too. This of S4 and this, this early necro book timing that you can get on the Beastmaster. I mean, it, I've never seen sort of the, the the rush get so many kills. You know, sure, you know, getting it this fast, you're gonna have that pressure. They've already lost three heroes on this top lane to the necro book. Yeah, they're lucky to leave the bottle than try to alleviate Dyer's some pressure Middle on, which is interesting. And they're definitely paying the price for it on the side of OG. But yeah, this is a 10th pick Beastmaster. Really good Beastmaster game at this stage. Regeneration. Uh, point click targets to you roar them, they're gonna die. Big and prize. also, uh, the Earthshaker setup to make sure he can reliably get the roar off on a hero like Ember is quite nice. But just notice how OG just has so much wave force. Even when they're getting these kills, they're getting these dives. Now OG's finally going to make their rotation. And DK's ultimate is at the ready. And they might be the first to take an objective despite a lot of these early kills going through. Down these gross beams. See how much pressure they can put on. Top lane. Tower. And OG gets it again! Fisher into Raw, Radiant into Goodbye Mana. I mean, they, they, these two are just crushing this top lane. Like, Mipwon, he, he's died it three times now, bro. Side, not FNG away before he pops Radiant's the echo. So uh, OG able to keep the majority of them out of the Dyer's range of that setup. Is under attack. 
Zoji, can they Dire chase their alliance? They're doing a good job of just getting away. They have lost the tower, uh, but not losing any unnecessary heroes, their alliances. They could just keep themselves completely out of there. Dire's of course, with all these kills, S4's got up top. He's now able to finish off the tower. And, and here, 11 and a half minutes in, he's already got the level 3 necro. Jesus. <laughs> Third time's the charm. Do get the tower. Third kill on mid one. Uh, I wonder who they're gonna have take over the top lane. Will it be one of the supports? Pangolier and Coddle are both good options. Looks like they are going to then talk to the top. And look, if they're going to feed somebody Radiant's now, bottom at least it hopefully won't attack. be a super high value target. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Absolutely, yeah, mid has got to find his, his base elsewhere on the map. How's his farm going? He's got the javelin here, just trying to rush that maelstrom here. It's not in my nature. Uh, to help him sort of pick his game back up, as he's uh, understandably with those three deaths that he had up there. Falling a little bit behind on the Ember. Bottom step. He can get the, the walk in, but TP is already coming over towards the outpost. Alliance there, more than happy to fight this. They're just going to turn and straight towards that. No tell, they're up to the high road. They're first close, good angle with the rolling cover though. No tell, catching on to the three of them. The inch first don't pull up onto lift. And Lega has kept providing the heal. The base is going to the spread of this. But the gems are up. Mid one gems are looking down. They'll kill off Lip. Mega kill. He's going to be able to time that. to get his way out. As at the same time on the top half of the map, S4 picks up another. Takes out Zack. They may have got limp, but they still have two overall. Mid ones continue to try and chase onto Hansken. Nico baby by his side. OG have to, have to hold back. They can't dive in any further onto these two. It's nice to see that OG lives the same life that I live when they play against Beastmaster this patch. <laughs> Whoever goes to the top lane is just gonna die. I know we all talk about the memes of the dead lane and everything, but this Beastmaster hero is ridiculous. There's this like fight going on bottom and S4, he hasn't moved. Like if you see his map, it's top lane. That's all it is. He's been sitting there pushing it in. Worrying whoever shows up when his necro books available and since that cooldown got reduced and stuff to wait pretty much all the time This is uh, yeah, so pretty flawless Beastmaster play here from S4 so far. They're gonna try and make a gank onto it. No tell trying to close in with the thunder and What sort of backup is that? FNG's waiting in the shadows uh, No tell He's gonna be fine there. FNG not quite able to block him in for the Fisher no tail gets out, but again, you know, there's four of them trying to, trying to sweep across. They, they really want to slow down S4's game, uh, but unable to do so there, as uh, S4 is going to continue to have all the space that he wants up in. That is such good map awareness from S4. He has been aggressive 14 minutes Dyer's in a row. Bottom tower and the one time they make a move on him, he was fully aware of it. He was backing off before they even got there. And it's so important he stays alive. He's 5 0. Oh. Yeah, this is. Number one network. Couldn't be any better for him so far, and uh, he's ready to turn into a, a, a six and up. He, he's in with the smoke with FNG. They just want to no tail. There it is. It's going to be a number one for him. Oh, sure. Maybe not for the swashbuckle, the slow. Still causing issues. No tail. He's got nowhere to roll. Oh, the damage from these necro books is too much here. Another kill. But S4 completely unstoppable on this Beastmaster. And hey, would you look at that? Position to start attack. having a bit of a, a chip at the tier one tower mid. Beastmaster, you take the top tower and eventually you look to invade the mid tower, whether you casually walk Dyer's there or middle whether you turn into the smoke tank. Uh, really, even though it gets denied, that's just such an important tower to take at the stage against a hero like DK, where he, he, he wants to take your mid tower. I know it's not a mid DK, but the team that takes the first mid tower makes it harder for the other team. Coming on down, Limp Limp. Hulk's already out. He's able to jump away. And we've seen this a few times now. You know, OG tried that sweep on S4 up top. They're trying to get Limp in the jungle. Alliance doing a really good job this game. of staying a bit of a step ahead of OG. And making it hard for, for OG to, to make these aggressive moves. But they they kind of need to succeed with, with the lineup that they have. Yeah, Necrobook 3 is dead, so there should just be a free tower mid, I would assume. But thus far, Alliance, like you said, the have been quite I would say that I don't know what they do without the Beastmaster's book three. Radiance that is really the hero. So Radiance glad to see they agree and fun. they back off. Weaver, he's got yes, Maelstrom, no boots on. Okay. Trying to get in onto FNG. Pull up, he'll have it. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. You don't need boots necessarily. 
you have the IO and Sakuchi, the, the Sanji makes this game so much easier to play because he'll be able to much more reliably survive through that initial volley of spells top plus the healing he gets attack. from the IO. OG looks to want to make a move top. Tricky one to catch though, especially with Hanskin by his side and uh, Hanskin's already ready to take him out with a relocate. Yeah, that was never going to work, I think. Alliance just has really good positioning on the map. Really good awareness. Ready to dodge that game. That's four dodges from the point earlier. Hanskin, I guess that's the price they pay. And I'm sure OG kind of expected that to be the end result if Bio was behind him. Fine. Sent out that move, but... Still 9 to 5, just a 1k lead. It is close. Alliance. So he's got the Boots of Travel Midas Ember version. He's going Maelstrom into Boots of Travel. Ah! Alliance with the start. I'm walking up here. Yeah, rule. Down to mid one. Get out step jump in for the back line, but the fish is already going to finish mid one off. Popping the out of Dragon Form, opting to try and fight, but he's completely out of mana thanks to Necro, but as Steph, he's gonna get left behind. The river is bailing on him. As Steph goes down, Nico may be getting in aggressive with the chase off to Thompson. He's dying from this, and now that the runner's playing, Quasi knows how to have to jump out. Thompson's also been split from the lineup as Thompson falls. Double kill, double kill, kill. for his four. Dyer's body. As oh, they're really struggling, OG here. Alliance uh, are uh, uh, just each and every time creating this impenetrable defense that, that OG just can't seem to fight into right now. Yeah, I almost feel like this is a bit lazy for middle. He just walked up a high ground with no vision, with all of Alliance Dyer's missing, and it definitely it's requires fun. Alliance to be properly positioned at all times to punish that sort of move, but... He, he was number one net worth on his team despite the rough start that he had, and he just walked up the high ground and died instantly with no impact at all. Alliance capitalizing to the max on that one. They're now up by 5,000 gold at 18. Yeah, this is looking like uh, such a cleaner alliance that compared to what we saw for them in the first series that they had here in the league. They definitely went away and, and did their homework, and, and they've tightened up their gameplay dramatically. Uh, between that that last series and what we're seeing from them now as this is uh, this is just top form alliance here and uh, big smiles from s4 i mean uh, you can't blame him he's 801 on his beastmaster he is having quite the game yeah i don't know if og was ready for this alliance is playing so well uh, i feel like Radiance both drafts had nice win attack. conditions and alliance's draft i would say was a bit more fragile in terms of the timings that it had to hit the map control control it had to siege early and uh they are doing it Step. Be looking for a, some sort of setup there. Cautious though. Hands. Hanskin and Nico Baby there by the side. Of course, hands came ready at a moment's notice to bring Nico Baby straight into the action. And to lose Step. Gonna jump in on this. I mean, there's, there's a real trick coming over. Okay, has that back to buy his side. But all right, he's jumping on the back line for the dream cost. There he is. Dead. The thunder comes out. The fish is in place. Nico Baby's going to start. He comes to the back line. Look towards Thompson. S1 just standing his ground with a BKB. There's a Nico Baby and Red Fetching. Look at the chase down. Big one's going to roll for the end. Goes down south. Big one's locked down. Into the sky. As Moonbomb goes down. It's three dead on OG. Thompson's trying to run. He's out of mana. He's also going to find the team. Double kill. I mean, what is that she's doing? They're just making it easy for a life. I mean, that, that was a pretty wild initiation from Zedron. Yeah, I feel like S4 had to work really hard for his earlier kills. The last kill has just been poor drinking or walking up high ground. I'm going to get it. to mess up like we have to make these interactive plays and if alliance is not ready for them they will work but alliance has been in the right position and it's just it's just so clean i don't know what else to say yeah no this is i mean as you say you know i guess og waiting for a mistake from alliance this alliance doesn't look like it's going to make any mistakes this game uh, from from what we've seen so far i mean how and how big their heroes are getting the next thing you know, he's going to have his Scardi complete. Uh, and then once he has that on top of the S and Y, 
there, there's going to be more than ample time for Hanskin to just get in every single time and offer up that, that extra bit of heal and sustain to, to make it very hard for OG to, to ever be able to burst through this Weaver. Bottom lane, he's in with a setup. On the dead one. Flip one's down. Roar onto no tail. Holding him in place in the Rolling Thunder. And, and they're just chasing for more. There's just no stopping here for the Lions. Straight over to Thompson. Surrounding him and taking him down. It's 20 to 5, 21 minutes in, 9k lead for Alliance as they are completely dominating OG. And he's got the Wisp tethering him, the Necrobug move speed aura. He's at 700 plus move speed on Nico Baby. So with that, that's without boost. The record. The SNY is actually more value because it's bonus percent movement speed, which Sakuchi is flat bonus move speed. So he's getting like basically more than boots out of Dyer's an SNY. Uh, we are concerned about Weaver's body. survivability in tandem with his lack of damage early, but he has his implant, a nice neutral item, and he's able to skip the boots so his other timings are coming online much earlier. Uh, Weaver does suffer with regen. He's a hero that usually has to go for like a Falcon Blade or an earlier Lincoln Spear against a hero like DK. This IO is definitely enabling Nico Baby to just go for all the injurious items that feel really nice. Bottom. I mean, Midpoint tries to go in onto FNG, but Lynx in with a backup. Falls down. Midpoint getting burst low. No tower in with the Rolling Thunder that provides some safety for Midpoint. He takes down low. They do get FNG over to the side. Thompson was trying to join the team, but S4 puts him in a in position with the roar. It's actually trying with the TPM. Is he going to make it away? He does. Only just, but uh, again, Thompson dying. S4 continues there to just sort of take whatever he wants it. Each and every time, the roar's guaranteeing a kill. And there's just, there's no save from OG. Uh, as soon as S4 opens up onto someone, it's, it, 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 it's an easy attack. kill. Dyer's but for a middle tower has fallen. Hanskin has pinged Seb here. They, they obviously don't see him based on what we see with their wars. They know that Seb was not at that fight, and he must be somewhere else, and there's not too many options left. Uh, Seb cleans up the triangle, trying to complete his BKB. I, don't, I think that fight honestly wasn't that bad for OG. All things considered, there were a lot of narrow escapes coming out from them, and then in the meantime, Seb was completing a crucial item on the other side of the map. So this may be go time. I don't really know when there's a better go time for OG. BKB from DK, he has Blink BKB at this point. I don't even know if it's enough. The raw damage now might just be too overwhelming, despite the fact that DK was meant to be tanky in this game. Yeah, I know, just Nico, baby, so huge. I mean, 24 minutes in. Maelstrom S and Wiscardi, as we saw there on the numbers, it's just under three minutes faster uh, than what you can normally expect to see on a Weaver. They're, they're looking for a fight here, Lions. He's a pillager. And uh, well, that's them. He's going to try and start it. They're trying to get rid of Hanskins. They're looking for a combo. Calls out onto Thompson. Hanskins still alive. And can he finally finish him off? He can. No doubt comes with a roll of thunder. They can't kill, but Thompson's going to fall to the next level. They've got the chains onto it. Oh, no, Dragon Tail's done from Seb, but there's the, the coverage from FNG. Lays down the pressure. Stops them from being able to kill off S4. As OG again just losing another horrendous team fight for themselves. They, they lose four, they only get a handskin, and they really had to throw everything onto the IO to even get that kill at all. You know, I've had some casual Dota players come in and say, I, I feel like I can't have much Dyer's impact in the offense. I feel like I'm always reliant upon my team to carry me, and I feel like S4 is shutting that Dyer's notion down. Top like, tower is I, I can't believe this. This is insane performance. 12, 0, and 5. This is how you carry a freaking game from the offense. Yeah. The last pick, they trusted him to do exactly this by giving him last pick. I guess he gave himself last pick, so he trusted himself. Hey, you don't have faith in yourself? That's important too, but I. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is such good play. Like, they're, they're dying to his stuff on the ground, and it's enabling so much to happen with these squishy heroes we were concerned about. Oh, so I'm not so squishy. That's the all the Got a TP away, there's gonna be a killer before he's even out of there. 
as no tails out of the game. Seven's actually just getting pushed back to the fountain here by Nico, baby. Dyer's top tower is under There seems to be very little that OG can do right now to hold the lines back. 29 to 7, 18k lead. And 26 Dyer's minutes in our lives, they're taking the top rack. Tier three's down, racks are exposed. It doesn't seem like OG can hold it. Dyer's mid tower is under attack. I mean, he's, he's got nothing here. He's out. He's trying oh, to run. But they're, they're underneath the tier four. It's getting messy. Dyer's it's top getting very, so very top. messy here. Dyer's as as again, you know, this top. is so different to the alliance that we saw the other day. Dyer's this is the alliance that the fans expected to Dyer's see. And my goodness, they, they're top. getting a show right here in game one against OG. That might have been the funniest use of Echo Slam I've ever seen. FMG, no blink, but just a shard. And uh, Echo Slam to keep the Aftershock stun on top, and so he wasn't able to catch any of his spells. I'm just impressed, man. They There were so many chances for OG to fight their way back into this game with these clever smokes to try to catch out these cores. Every single one of them was evaded by them. Five seconds remaining. The first blood on mid one, and yeah. that's a level six beast master. And it was minute Dyer seven. Team it took a while. Yeah, and maybe just a little less complicated. I'm a believer in some weird fives, but I don't know about Pango five. Mm -hmm. Also want to make a comment that I didn't like the IO Shaker, because that's just a support duo that seems very greedy. But this new Ag Shard, Shaker doesn't Radiant need a blink. Team ban. He's just playing from afar. We even saw the Echo because the Aftershock um, onto the Fissure. Like, that's Dire just super cool, and I think it activates this Wisp Shaker combo. Kevin, what kind of changes do you want to see as we are headed into the draft here? For Radiant the Team Ban. Yeah, I, I agree with what Kyle said about the um, the Pango 5 being a little bit weak, and that's um, a little bit of the weird stuff that OG likes going for, Dire but it certainly um, gave Beastmaster more or less a 1v1 because Earthshaker was comfortable dealing with Pango uh, with all of the creep manipulation stuff. Um, I thought the Dragonite offlane was actually pretty effective in Ten terms of harassment. Remaining. The skill build was kind of cool in that it basically guaranteed that Weaver would get harassed a lot, but Five ultimately Weaver remaining. got too much regen, ended up uh, stabilizing, um, which was what, what, what kind of made everything Radiant look weak. Uh, because at some point, Dragon Knight just, he's if he doesn't like get some kills in the lane, in that circumstance, he's just going to fall off compared to another hero. So probably just a completely different set of five heroes for OG is what we're expecting to see. Okay. 
Uh, we got Alliance picking up the Nyx Assassin first. I am most curious to see if uh, if they throw Limp under the bus a little bit again there uh, Ten by picking his hero so early pick. on in the draft. Be staple and uh, OG open up with the Rubik, the always fitting Rubik. Don't we have like a stat on Rubik currently though? I think uh, maybe it was Cap who mentioned it the other day that he's got like an abysmal win rate so far. I will find out for you. I think it was like remaining. what, like 30 something or 41 something? Like it's very low. Five, it was higher than remaining. that. I think it was like 46%. 46, I think yeah. that's too high. Yeah, I made Radiant fun of him. Like 46%. I speak for Not the great. trees. Oh, Ooh, oh no! It's happening! They, oh, they made the classic blunder. 25% this month. Oh. Uh, well, and it's that, February 1st. This is just. It's not February 1st. This is February. Don't do that to her. Just this month and just in EU. 10 seconds remaining. Okay. I think yep. it might have been across the DPC. Well, across the DPC, JJ just has stats. Remaining. Obviously, he has to one up me. Um, he gives uh, stats uh, it's 16 to 23. You know, in EU, it's only been picked eight times this month. Um, but that is all DPC, 41%. Well, 41%. I was correct. This one's in the books, folks. Pack it up. It's a 2 0. They did it. The Nature's Prophet does it for you. I want to see it in the Dying chat. I'm not going to say it here. You know what you Room have to do. Master. You play what? against a line. No, Sheaves, don't help them. <laughs> the truth Fill in the know. blanks. Okay. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. Aside, what about the Prophet is the game winner here? Is the fact that it lanes well against Rubik as a support? 10 seconds Giant remaining. Treants. Okay, yeah, you can say like you're strong Five or whatever, but it would be remaining. picked every game if that was the case. Clearly, that has to be something. We're confused global... why he's not picked. In every it, is game. A, it is a Zeus Salt and a Global Teleport plus an Invis Hunter. So naturally, a ton of synergy. Nyx, lots of disable, map Dire control, no man. tower pressure. Furion provides both map pressure and tower damage. Creeps. In addition, it is Alliance, and you're playing against a Rubik that's most likely safe lane. Furion owns him. It could be core, it could be support, who knows. S4 went up the mountain to train with remaining. the master himself, Admiral Bulldog. Five he spent six remaining. months at an elevation of 8,000 meters doing nothing but learning how to control trees Radiant with his mind. Band. That's not true. But uh, the Nyx Assassin, of course, you know, having that presence being the invisible assassin makes Dying it really easy to, for the Nature's Prophet to be able to teleport over and participate in ganks. And if you get one more mobile hero, you got a lot of aggression coming out from Alliance, which is what I like to see. Mm -hmm. When we saw when we saw FNG play Nature's Prophet uh, against Ten Team Nygma, he was an absolute beast. And we talked earlier today in the series already Five that we want to see remaining. on the position four and fives, so we want to see supports that can contribute a lot. And I think as far, if, if it is an Aegis Prophet five, because obviously that's still a little bit up in the air, but if it is, this position five will contribute loads. And I like to see that. Puck band out on the side of OG together with the Weaver. So two heroes from the previous game that they uh, thought difficult to deal with. What do we think about the Brewmaster picked up, by the way? Pango position five didn't work out, but the Brew position five, how about that one? Brew support is actually pretty darn good right now. Um, he's got unnaturally high HP. Um, he doesn't have a huge amount of armor, but basically like if you're fighting to the death, Brew is really solid right now. Lowers the uh, attack speed and movement speed when you use clap. So generally you're just gonna do well in trading. And you might think like, hey, but you're not gonna be that useful later with your skills because you don't have the blink dagger. Well, you just buy Urn Radiant and then you can use Cinder Brew down. and then Urn somebody. So you get to still use your skills from range. And then obviously splitting is still pretty incredible as a support. So can work there. It could also lane decently well. Um, I think against nature's profit as the support it would lane pretty darn well against profit as a core against profit maybe not so much 10 seconds remaining yeah. i agree I, it, it has options it's better suited than a pango to be a five because you're way more based around remaining. just xp based damage um whereas pango your q and your lucky shot like you need to be hitting stuff your mm -hmm. w makes you tankier but if you're a support you don't really feel good about that you can just cinder earn from a far oh, split dear. that's a ton of value from a five position you don't even have to risk anything so as usual. Thank you, Kevin. You said it wrong, but okay. What did I say wrong? You said thank you, Kevin. Yeah? 
I get confused. Are we supposed to like like I what, feel we call him name? Ten seconds we call him meeting. Kevin, but he's purged, and then there's BSJ, but we call him Brian. Am I supposed to be what? using your first Five names, seconds. or am I supposed well, to be weird. using at Midas mode? He said, "Call me the Kevmeister," and he didn't respond if I said anything other than that. Kyle just keeps lying. It's his. Uh, it's his it was the Kevinator, by the way, not Kevmeister. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Dead to me, Kyle. So, I mean, I guess he's using different <laughs> names for different people. Shady, if you ask me. It's just good names Dire to say. Team pick. Kevin. Ricky. Brian. Name's Ricky. Ricky. Steve. Yep. Steve. Isn't that fan. the name of your biggest fan? <laughs> yep, the name of Kyle's biggest fan, Steve. Steve. It's like the name Todd. Mm, not as good. No? no. Not as strong. What Todd. Dad. No. Thaddeus. Ten seconds Thaddeus, remaining. yeah, Thaddeus is a good name. I feel like the old Roman names were mm -hmm. the best. They oh, just yeah. had a bunch Five of... Five seconds remaining. I don't know, it just felt... Tiberius? Alexander. Yeah, just sounds like the name an emperor would have. Augustus. My middle name is Alexander. Maybe that's why I like... I was middle what name. About, what about Ricky? Really? Do you guys like that name? I do like Ricky. I like Ricky Maru better. It's personally. really nice against Fury and uh, once you get Battle Fury for creep clearing and you hunt him, which is very important. Also, Cloud's very good against Nyx. Non-damage, disabled, and silence. Yeah, Sprout doesn't feel that effective. Like, Prophet, until he gets Orchid, at least Ricky has a lot of solutions to get out of that pressure. Radiant so I kind of like it. His base armor is okay on Ricky, right? Timber can't remember. But I feel like it's at least, like, medium. Good pick. Mm -hmm. That, that matchup's not good, though. That's a really good pick. Ricky. Well, uh, when they did win that game against Team Nigma, where they had the Nature's Prophet, they did also run that Timber Saw. Yep. 10 and, seconds uh, remaining. And their other cores were bad Wraith King. Wraith King, obviously, still in the pool. Five seconds Wait a second. Is this Alliance saving Limp's pick? What? What? No way. Way. He's got a lot of options too. I love Timber with these two heroes. It's still flexible in the lane, and you just cover the weaknesses. You know, you've got a Nyx. It's just, you know, Nyx needs damage. Timber brings a lot of damage. He doesn't have stuns. There's the Nyx for you. And uh, you have so much pressure now because Timber can play one lane by himself. That makes Fury and Free to play elsewhere. It just It's a really nice way to add pressure. And it owns this entire draft of OG right now. So what is uh, what, what are we looking for for OG? Because they ha can run, run everything somewhat flexible. Although I think personally, I would prefer the Brew 5, the Ricky, obviously for mid one. So that means we will be looking for a Seb and a Thompson hero. Uh, they need magic burst ideally to give them some kill options against Timbersaw around the like eight to 12 minute mark somewhere in there. Otherwise Timber can, uh, if you don't like shut him down in lane and he kind of just gets a little bit too out of control. So a little bit of burst damage would be nice. You uh, just have trouble with that because you're playing against Nyx. Covers you against Timber. Dire you know, like, team hit. Oh, oh, that's cool. I want to also get an asterisk out here too. This could be Shadow Demon mid. Um, just want to say that because we have seen Thompson do that in the past. Although I hope that it means that Seb is a brewmaster and Ten that Shadow Demon will remaining. be support. But you can't ever I, be 100% sure. I don't know about this. Five seconds remaining. This is very ambitious. Purge is good. I, I think it'd be purge. too dangerous <laughs> to play SD mid because uh, if you're just trying to throw poison, you're just going to get Spike Carapace into comboed since you're squishy. And if Timber ever gets onto you, it's kind of Dying similar situation. So I, I think it's much more likely for Shadow Demon. Assassin. Oh, I'm loving this aggression. This, is, uh, this draft is really nice. It's likely a Fury and support now, but... Like if this is an SD Rubik support, that's the dream. These heroes do not deal with Treants whatsoever, and if it's a Brew core, you're also happy. Ten seconds you remaining. have Timber against Riki Brew cores, like that's the dream. I actually think Kevin might be right. Five seconds Where it's remaining. an SD mid, just because it doesn't make sense really otherwise. That was Shiver's idea, not mine. I think it's bad to play SD mid here. Hey, I'm not saying what? I'm overly convinced, but it does allow you to get to the... Do, do you still need the axe to get the break and stuff? Yeah, you yeah, do. And the Otherwise, it's just a, only a seven-second constant dispel. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, I think you need though. that axe on the Shadow Demon, because that's the way to win, but then you have to play it mid, because otherwise it's not going to be enough. But one thing that we mentioned after the previous game is that we want to see OG play a little bit of a faster pace, because that's the way they like to play. That's the way we are used to seeing them pay, play. Does this lineup allow for them to play Radiant faster? Team ban. Not really. 
in the echo. If they lane well, it does. But like last game, they, they lost their safe lane so hard and their first couple rotations got completely stumped. So yeah. that's why they had no chance last game. So I don't know. They can pressure PA at least remaining. with like Shadow Demon 4 plus whoever the offlane is. But Five PA is going to be really effective remaining. at later stages of the game once she gets farmed against SD and Rubik to kill them quick. Wait, SD Die though is... I, I think it almost has to be core just because they need break so badly against Timber PA. You're it's so good here. You're just repeating my points, not. Yeah, but then they have an SD core though. Yeah. Control this. They really don't have it's a great means of like hitting builds either. Ten seconds remaining. Of... Look, memes are it in does. nowadays. I know. I, so I have the it. solution. Five seconds. It will be Brew off lane, Shadow Demon mid, and then they go for the DP five. Still in the pool. Radiant That's Team Bad. I would have liked them to. F I would have much no. preferred a DP over a Shadow Demon. <laughs> um, no. Pur just does. No, no. <laughs> he's just. He's giggling yeah, over there. He's actually thinking. What, of what it is the DP five gonna do to stop PA from murdering her every single fight in two seconds? Eventually, she's gonna get an item. Ten seconds remaining. Hopefully. Oh, what are Yules to delay by two and a half seconds? Like, <laughs> I don't come know. on. Five seconds. All right. So, what, what do you want to see on the side of OG? Uh, a real mid hero is what I want to see. Okay. Uh, ideally, with magic burst, somebody that can help guarantee like PA kills. Um, something like magic nuke heavy and bursty. Lena like, but maybe not Lena. I got a Nyx. Like that's so risky. Yeah, Nyx does beat those type of heroes certainly, and that's what's kind of cool about the PA and Timber cores actually with Nyx covering it. It's like your your Nyx is always going to be good because those heroes are weak to burst. You know Radiant what? Radiant Team Pick. Four We're gonna see Lim play different hero for the first time in the European DPC League. A Void Spirit, most like. Very cool. Um, we did see Alliance ban out both the Titan and Nygma, by the way. That means that they are assuming also Brewmaster position five. Uh, we got a Tiny coming hero. out from OG as their last pick. Ooh, tiny mid. Yeah. Tiny mid. Mm. Wow. It's been a while. No time. Playing, you're playing against Limp on a Tiny mid. It's not a bad matchup. You can kill Void Spirit because the shield is purely for physical. I'm just thinking though the fact that Limp is known for his Tiny. Like he's got to know this oh, matchup. Oh, so is Thompson. I don't know actually. It's been a while. Like Tiny's been changed. It, it's it's definitely Tiny favored, mm -hmm. and it makes sense because OG like they're definitely playing this more like assassin style. They've got to kill this Prophet, this Nyx. They're pretty susceptible to burst. You know, I I actually kind of like this. I can't think of a better pick for Thompson here. Uh, we see Limp and um, S4 are debating who's playing what. Ten seconds remaining. Who is playing which one? Because we know both can play both, right? Five yes. seconds remaining. Shouldn't it well, be S4 they, on the timber? If they put timber mid, then Tiny's gonna have a really bad time, I assume. But in the same vein, Void Spirit wouldn't do nearly as well against Ricky, so they just have to decide who to shut down, and they're gonna go for offlane timber, or at least S4 is playing it. Um, I, I guess my, my viewpoint is I don't know if Thompson is going to have an excellent laning stage either way, but he does provide a lot of burst damage. And if he gets Blink at a good time, he's going to destroy Profit across the map. And he should be able to pressure the PA and maybe the Timber as well and get some really crucial kills. So it's the tempo kind of hero that they need. Maybe OG can win it, but I like Alliance Draft better. All right, thank you very much, Purge. Kyle, your thoughts? Uh, could go either way. OG need to play a very specific game style to win. The Riki and Tiny have to get over farmed and the team fights have to be centered around Bruce Split. You know, Timber's annoying to deal with, you throw him up in the air, you go for the squishy supports, PA's low damage early on. It's certainly possible. I'd favor Alliance a bit, but anybody's game. I'm going Alliance, you know? I went against them game number one, and I, I shouldn't have, you know, being the Alliance fangirl that I am, but I, I take a look at what they've got in the lineup. I see that Prophet, I like the Timber's off. It just kind of makes sense to me. So I'm Alliance. All right, let's see who gets the lanes they want and let's see who can set the tempo for this second game of this best of three series. We're heading over to OD Pixel and BSJ. Thank you very much, Sheev. Yes, yeah, so Brian, we've heard what the panels had to say. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, looking at the, the two drafts we have coming into this game too between uh, OG and Alliance? Topson bringing the tiny <laughs> mid back. Is it going to work? Uh, I'm just coming from the perspective of Ricky. 
where I've played this hero a lot this patch and it feels like anytime you're dealing with the early tower pressure you just lack any wave clear or anything you can really do to stop it yourself and uh, he's dealing with a five position nature's prophet and a timber who should be able to play up in his face for pretty much the entire early game and there's not too much Ricky to do to change that I think it's a lot going to be on Thompson to Snowball the map control. <laughs> Seeing Thompson the TI do the whole phase boots, run around it, oh. never stop killing people strat. And I think he's gonna have to get some crucial kills early because PA is one of Ricky's worst matchups in the carry role. Ricky never really wants to buy MKB. And PA is also one of the few carries that can burst him in a matter of seconds before he gets that trick. 30 trick seconds to battle. Uh, and so, you know, Tiny in, in this meta and, and as a hero, you know, why, why is this something that a lot of teams aren't picking like well, what are sort of the downsides of tiny what does he not offer that so many other mids do in this part <laughs> he's i honestly he's think he's an okay hero oh, yeah, 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 i just think yeah, he enables a lot of mid laners like storm who <laughs> don't necessarily have the strongest levels like one through three that they would kind of just creep up the battle and that begins. if you pick tiny too early in the draft it would hand a perfect game to the opponent so in this case, Void Spirit's more of a very reliable laner. He kind of gets a decent start no matter what matchups he's in. So in this, like, he's more about enabling himself as the tiny than it is about worrying about the farm of the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just plays the <laughs> See how well Limp's able to do here. Match up against the, the tiny. Uh, and sort of overall then, do you, do you have a draft here? Do you prefer coming to this game? Too? I would much prefer to be the PA yeah. on Alliance's draft. I think Nico Baby last game surprised a lot of us with his ability to uh, basically just do as much damage and be as tanky as he was on Weaver. And a lot of that was on the back of the space that S4 made for him. And I think we're kind of seeing a similar recipe. I think S4 should have a great early game. It's not going to be until later they can deal with Timberstaw. And PA's really only weakness is the same as Ricky. She lacks wave clear early, and she hates to have people playing up in her face and running at her. So in this case, she's not really going to worry about the tower push as it is as much as it is the tiny that's going to be trying to invade her pump. That's what I'm worried about for the PA. Yeah, I'll be interested to see if yeah, Thompson's able to, to make those moves in the, the mid game and, and really cause issues for Nico Baby when he's still sort of in that in that farming phase of the game. So far, we're with the lane set up up top. But Sax is trying to do their best to, to put the pressure on for these two. I mean, is Nico Baby going to farm all right up here? Can FNG do enough to, to keep him safe in this lane? Yeah, PA usually only struggles if they can dive. And they can harass her a lot. You may have to buy a little bit of extra regen. Provid's a great support for that, though, because he can always TP back base and buy some himself or pick up any. Now, Rubik Brew Rester is a nice lane because you have the Cinder Brew that's easily activatable by the Fade Bolt. But I, I really am only afraid of kill lanes from PA. He doesn't necessarily mind just daggering from a fire. The base damage nowadays is decent ever since they've been giving her that buff over the course of patches. One thing he's going for the phase boots. Uh, I like this a lot against uh, every hero that isn't tiny. So I guess that's a bit of a concern, but nice and lane as well. Dyer's top tower. What about the Ricky attack. down bottom? Alliance doing a great job of really harassing mid one in this lane laning stage. Some huge amounts of damage there from the two of them. Yeah, they expertly counter this Ricky. Timber saw absolutely nothing you can do about it. He's he's up, really oh, oh. And PA being the matchup, as good of a matchup as she is, I will be thoroughly impressed if mid one carries. I feel like this is a very hard Ricky. And I will learn a lot. First blood. Not off to a great start. I mean, as you said, it's, it's a hard game for the Ricky. And Alliance, uh, they, they started off with a first blood against him. This, this lane proving to to already be a little too much for mid one to handle and, and survive against. That's actually crazy. Onsigan just went for the, the mana burn. It's like Carapace really isn't that great this lane against the low instance of damage from Ricky Blink as well as the Shadow Demon Poison. But he's just being super annoying and saying, hey, mid one, if this lane wasn't hard enough for you already, here's less mana for you. We'll see if uh, mid one can play a little more space as well. Uh, again, just Ooh, these two. Every time he tries to step up, making it very hard for, for mid one to find his farm down here. And, uh, you know, obviously last game, we saw mid one have a very tough time on, on the safe lane Ember, so eyes definitely on it. Let's see what he's going to be able to do this time round. 
as uh, top lane. Oh. Oh. Steps got from FNG. Nico Baby's going to jump over the board to Zach. FNG will go down. Nico Baby get the tray kill. He'll be able to do all the fairy fire. Indeed, he wasn't quite ready for that. Did start to back off, and that's going to cost him the opportunity to finish that kill off as Nico Baby won't be able to find him in return. Secure this arcane room for Limp. He is awesome. a very juicy bottle refill for him as well. From the Topson with him there. He's going to miss out on a lot here as Topson is on the mana front too. And bottom, yeah, I'm consistently seeing mid one just being unable to really step up to the wave here. He's going to get his build. <laughs> For Ricky, uh, that shows he knows he has absolutely no aggression Radiant potential here as he is to weather this timber saw storm. The problem I have with this tiny last pick is that against timber, if your carry can't naturally stay in lane against it and defend the tower, that usually you have like a mid laner like Ember or something that's gonna go bottom and just be push the wave, drag the timber saw as much as possible. I don't really know who that is here. They bring down here to stall the timber saw's early momentum pushes with the catapults. As uh, the thing that is timber saw is so nice here is he flourishes against the carries that have to stay in lane. If you're a carrier that can kind of just dip out and go jump, Timber Saw loses a lot of his early effectiveness in terms of shutting down the opponent carry, but Ricky has no backup here. Mid lane. And in onto Topson, but hands can off the mark over the sky. Topson able to do a good job of juking it. Turns around to look to kill off Hanscan, but a remnant scout detected disruption there from No Tail. Poison won't kill Hanscan, and Topson does end up going down at the end of it all. Yeah, you were mentioning he was struggling for mana, and uh, he was five mana short of the Avalanche. Look at this chase here from Limp. Another beautifully placed Double remnant. Kill. I mean, really getting the work done there with that arcane rune. Two kills for Limp in the mid. Yeah, this match can be rather toxic with these early lineups that are on the mix, where you just can't deal with them. And, uh... It makes your whole entire game awkward because that movement mid is allowed to happen because Nyx is just not needed at all bottom. And it, it, I, I, the snowball effect is insane attack. how quickly it comes into play. S4 is going to certainly be looking to apply a lot of pressure with this catapult. Bottom lane, he is level 6 as well, so that amps up his damage and aggression to threaten anybody who defends. Really? Dyer's mid tower is under attack. See, in the jungle, has Ken and FNG starting to evade. A lot of damage onto it and no tail here, but uh, able to make his way around the, the tree and body box. Uh, but, but I mean, but yeah, as you say, it's, it's definitely going to be a question of, uh, of, of how on earth did it, they get these items onto to Ricky. Like, can mid one go elsewhere on the map? As you said, you can't really hit the jungle tree. Top lane, we'll see Topson coming in with the rotation onto Nico, baby, but he had a pretty much a, a full wand. Uh, he's going to be off and into the trees, and uh, they can't hunt any further for him. So this. This move not going to be successful here from the two of them as Nico Baby's able to sneak himself away. Radiant and uh, yeah, this, this is just time attack. wasted here for OG. Really good itemization from Nico Baby having one raindrops to be able to survive for that anticipated attack. Mid one having to be very cautious there. He gets caught by that remnant. He, he'd be dead for sure. Bottom tower's already dead, by the way. <laughs> I didn't even Seven notice minutes. that. Yeah, he just finished it off. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, that, that bottom lane. I mean, it, it pretty much what went as, as you would sort of expect it to do. Right? I mean, you've got this risky lane. And they're, they're never going to be able to hold off this Timber's, Timbers early pressure. Yeah, absolutely. But I didn't see anything that it was the entire line of the are now going to play his own dead lane, making sure that there's no power pressure on top of the from OG. This is a really nice way to enable heroes like PA. They want to sit taking the safest farm on the map, chilling bottom. Yeah, Tiny's going to take over bottom. I guess I expected Ricky to stay bottom, but he's going to be jungling a small camp around mid. I don't know. It's not like a flame. I don't think there's much of a better option. That just does not feel good. This game looks like. I mean, I guess at this sort of stage, what for OG, the, the real pressure is going to be on Topson and, and Steph to, to just make moves and, and keep the game going to, to allow Mid1 to get the time to, to get his farm. 
Yeah, I love what Thompson's doing here. He, he knows he can't really kill Nico Baby, but he knows Nico Baby can't really mess with him. So he's just being annoying. Well, look at that. I'm right, gonna bring in a pair of hands here to, to try and have a go on to Thompson. Hands can joining to, to try and push Thompson back. But as you say, Thompson's still very much knowing his strength. He's, he's top, trying to get aggressive on the West But uh, yeah, he's, he's not really in, under any pressure at all. In fact, Steph on the force to, to get out of it. As uh, he has to TP away from S4. As uh, it really does seem at the moment, nothing they can do about this Timber. Link comes in from the side with the DD ready to go. Blows up Saxa. And the pressure will be on to another tier one tower. So not only S4's presence laying down bottom allowing them to get that very early tier one tower taken from the safe lane of Ode. Now moving up to the top lane, he's, he's sort of pushed them out of this area of the map and he's getting pressure onto a second tier one already at nine minutes in. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Whenever I watch teams like OG, I feel like I'm watching 5D chess where I don't fully understand how they win this game. And right now, if they win this game, Dyer's at this very moment, tower. I have no idea how that's gonna happen. And I know it doesn't seem like they're down by that much. He is getting way better farm than the Ricky. And Timbersaw, is, I guess P is only ahead by 100. Oh, I just tuned into the deck. Never mind, maybe it's new. I just see all this stuff and I'm like, eh, PA's farm and bottom. Timbersaw is number one on the net worth. Void Spirits games perfectly fine. Like all three cores on Alliance are perfectly happy. You'd rather have the good start on Timber than PA because Timber is the one that's making space. So, uh, uh, man, OG, uh, I feel like they just neglected to respond to Timber, which is a hero in my opinion, at least requires a response. They look to invade or kill yeah. Nico Baby Bottom. But he's, he's, Spidey's senses are tingling here. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's gonna stick at least around the tier one. He's got FNG to back him up. Radiance top uh, tower and if you like this attack. from Nico, baby, he's got the death so queued up, so we're not going for the Battle Fury. I, I guess going for something that's going to allow him to play in a way that, that will really punish this this whole time where, where Mib 1, he knows Mib 1 has to get the Battle Fury on the Ricky. Uh, and he's going to be able to be so active before Mib 1 has his core items to fight with. I don't know how much I like this or not. Mid lane. Oh, oh, sack oh, oh, oh. Radiance top tower. So you see that OG's attack. electing to just play completely away from the temp saw. Radiance structure. But that's costing them all their tier ones, because wherever they're at four bottom, bottom first, then top, now mid. Radiance uh, top trying to make it look space and action happen as possible in the other lanes, but does killing a nature's profit really matter all that much as lip I mean definitely not. <laughs> Sure, he gets the profit, but he loses his life. A king. I would say space from Thompson instead, but I don't really know what space is looking for, you know? <laughs> I like this TP on from FMG to the high ground. This is one of the cute things you can do on Nature's Profit support. You can do it on core too, but you know, you got nothing else to do when you support. He is only level four, so he's basically just a ward for his team at this point. S4 still uh, very much uh, seemingly in unkillable territory. I mean, it, it, does it ever sort of... Tower is under you know, where, when are they going to be able to kill this Timbersaw, this game? Look, it looks like Steph has gone Brown Boots Spirit Vessel, so that's the timing they're looking okay. for. But they didn't get any new charges bottom after using it to be aggressive on FNG there because he's nice and far away from the brew. Uh, S4, I think they can attack. hit this window where they get a Spirit Vessel charge before the Jewels comes out. That, Dyer's I think, is the narrow window they will attack. have to hit. Radiance yeah, middle tower is under attack. Single-handedly take mid tower while it takes a four-man commitment from fortified. OG in order to get the trade. Radiance middle tower has come. Thompson. He's got to probably TP out immediately here. Dyer's top tower. If he tower wants to live, he's going to stop. Making his Radiance way out. Middle tower is under attack. He's out in time. That's good space. Yeah. 
When you're mid and you have a hero like Ricky that just has to farm all the good farms, Dyer's all the nice safe farm, fallen. and he's got no other options, you can get creative. You have to take some super dangerous farm, force the enemy team to come respond to you without dying, and that's exactly what Thompson's doing here. The overwhelming blink. Now, was Vivi follows up on that? That would be a pretty wild first dive for us to complete overwhelming blink. Split out and that extra bit of control to keep S4 held in place with the wind pounder. Comes back down though. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be able to do anything aggressive onto S4. They've got to start running away from it. They still got to remain that he's going. The combo and the spear vessel. That might just do it. He's out to snuff the timber chain, but the spear vessel allows them to get the kill. Mip on him with a finishing hit. Oddly enough, they had to wait until the Brewmaster ulti ended because he still gets the Spirit Vessel charges while he's in Brew Split, but he can't use it <laughs> until he comes out. So that was uh, really well played by OG. That's step one. The thing about this Nico Baby item choice is that there's two ways you can go. You can try to capitalize on the fact that Ricky's not able to fight by going the Deso like he is, or you can just capitalize on the fact that he's going to be passively farming too, and you outscale him, so you just go for the passive farm route. Radiant's middle and he's choosing tower is under the attack. Uh, I feel like in NA they always choose the latter, so I don't exactly know how this one's gonna play out. Look at that! Come and drop the. I'm in a battle fury for middle one. Honestly, pretty damn good, all things considered. Really bad lane. <laughs> steroid to enable him to get that sooner, like the Doug Brown type heroes and the type heroes do. No, I, I mean, absolutely, considering the start he had. And, and as you say, now when you see Mibon actually being still able to achieve this sort of Battle Fury timing, does that, that makes you a bit worried, a bit more worried for, for the build that Nico Baby's going in return? It just means that they have to get a lot done with the death zone and the timing they hit. Uh, they can't be content with the status quo of both teams farming at this point, because Ricky will just be much happier with the items he's bought compared to the PA. Oh, Find the setup onto Lim, but just step by his side. Tops are starting to move in as well. Alliance, they are beginning to set up in the jungle. Actually, Lim maybe seeing if he can get the connection onto Step. Step. That's pretty bad. He's out of light. Let's see if they can get anything more out of this demonic push. Lock down Lim for now. Over to the side. That's it. He's trying to get out, and he'll make it away. No TP cancel there between the two of them. Same to be said. As Dyer's these, middle uh, tower surrounding is under motel. attack. Can't put a stop to his escape either. So, I mean, I'm definitely very intrigued to see if, if Topson does indeed do this. I mean, it's, it's not a lot of times you, you see the full blink, well, pretty much no time, uh, where you see a hero that wants to rush the completed blink upgrade as their pretty much first and only major item. There's one player in the world that'll do it. It's yeah. probably top. <laughs> I mean, it's almost got that ags. Yeah. 1200 gold off. That's really important against Ricky specifically. Heavily reliant upon spell casting to survive. And missed the dust bottom. Narrowly missed. Yeah, very close there. Mid one just able to jump outside of the range of it. Still, you know, as every moment passes, mid one getting that little bit further ahead of Nico Baby's farm on the PA. They've got to get some action done with this Dessa. Totally, I'm really liking what OG is doing here. It tends to be how it goes when I'm watching OG in drafts where it doesn't really make sense to me what they were doing. They just killed the Timbers all once. Suddenly, the momentum on the map, it's palpable. You can feel that's kind of gone. They've taken all the tier ones, and now what? I mean, and, and, and you, you definitely seem right. It seems that, you know, I mean, what what do Alliance go for here? I mean, all the tier ones taken off the map. Like, what, what is the next move? Are you, are you trying to make some both moves with this PA and the death? So, you know, who are you trying to hunt down? That's why I'm really surprised. They're gonna try and get the jump in. Again, catch it. Stolen by the characters. 
Be able to step away, but this has got to be a, a, a big concern right, for Alliance, Brian. Is, is you know, this is fights where your PA has got a Desto, an item to, to fight with, but but you're losing to, to the team that has the Ricky with the Battle Fury. Midbond's getting more out of these fights than Nico Baby is. Yeah, my honest interpretation, and this is with the presumption that I'm 100% willing to be wrong, is that. I see them take all these tier ones, and I look at the map right now, and I'm not really sure what Alliance can do, objective-wise, like to further their map advantage. And by going this Desolator, you're pretty much saying that's what you want to do. If you want to go continue to force the issue, while if you had just gone Battle Fury, you would be content creating color because PA scales better than Rick. So I'm really skeptical just like I was skeptical of what OG was doing earlier, I was skeptical of what his vision of the game is. Done! Oh, I will manage to get the kill on the set, mid-bomb. Finds that Vegeta, mid-bomb and top commit. Yes. They're seeing if they can get back in on this. Stops them. Controlled by the Yules and Alliance. He's completely split it. Midborn won't be able to find any kills, but again, just finding that the space to continue to get his axe done, it, and he's pretty much there. So, all, again, just all things said and done, when you look at the lane that Midborn was given at the start, the beginning he was having, 20 minutes in, he's got his axe battle fury. This is this is brilliant timing for the Ricky. So what skipping the battle fury does for Nico, baby, is that usually you go battle fury Deso BKB. But now since he's removed the battle fury, his BKB timing will be a bit earlier than it would otherwise have been. So the fact that it's gonna have maybe a minute or two earlier BKB, but his later timings will be delayed, it just means that they really have to hit that timing hard. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I always go into the assumption that these players know more than I do about this scenario. So I expect that's what he's probably gonna be looking for. As OG wants to get to himself away. The vessel continue to take down though. Tops him up with the chase. Another burst combo takes that S4. The damage from the tricks of the trade. He sets up for another as Mip 1 gets the kill. And now Nico Baby is isolated alone. The stolen to stimulate from Saxon to give him the ability to dodge to the side. To keep himself away from the PA. He ain't getting controlled here by Thompson and Strap. As there's another dead S4 threat back here. And an attempt to turn the fight around. But he's just a mori. The vessel down upon him. Another plan put in place as S4. He's got to be careful, he brought back for this. He's trying to get out of the start, but he's oh, but pops and no, it again. It's a dieback on S4 here at 22 minutes. And the numbers, are, it's 14 to 40, less than 1K in. But you really can't help but feel that Alliance is, is really losing any sort of momentum this game. And the mid bonds Ricky is going to become a big, big problem. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, when I say PA scales better than Ricky, that's assuming they both have the same farm. One is 3,000 net worth ahead already, and he went battle for the axe. Full three ways in from it. Top here, he just pushes his third spell, and boom, they're dead. On the other hand, PA, he's being forced to fight. He has a fighting build. He's died twice ever since buying it. Uh, I, I legit think this could just be a mystery from Nico Baby. I, I think OG is punishing this, like, since that alliance had that they could continue forcing the issue. They were being aggressive with the Timber Saw when they had Spirit Vessel but no Yules. And now they're trying to fight in a time that it appears was too early for PA to be able to fight here. Because he is he's oh, oh, for these fighting items. He's kind of just died to the tiny overwhelming damage and the control coming out from the brewmaster. Beer vessel owning. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty sick from Seb. I, I really do think like OG had to play this near flawlessly to punish what Alliance is doing here, so. 
it, it's more impressive to me what OG is doing than it is now we're gonna have OG entering into the pit. Will we stand out by a line? See if they're gonna be able to try and put up a fight there to push OG off this objective. We have Seb, and Seb just 100 gold away from having Aghanims himself. <laughs> and it looks like even with the scan alive, they're, they're not looking to, to do anything about this. They, they don't feel confident of taking a fight around the pit uh, in this moment where Nico Baby still a few hundred gold off the BKB. So OG, they're going to be able to get this one for free. I think one of the hardest things to do in Dota is to accept that you can't do anything about what the other team has. And I think what the secret to OG's Haste. success this game was to accept that they could absolutely do nothing about the team or something. So the game has Seb died <laughs> to the Lynch Solo plus the Nature's Prophet ulti. And, uh, I don't know if you checked it out, Owen, but uh, have you looked at Thompson's item queue? Yeah, he's, he's nearly got it, dude. The, the yeah, he's committing. He is committing. It wasn't a meme. It's, as you said, if, if any player's gonna do it, if anyone's gonna rush the straight, upgraded blink, it, it would be Thompson. I mean, middle tower is under attack. Well, what do you think about it? I mean, it, it's gonna add a lot of damage to his combo, right? uh, and it's gonna be something else that, that's gonna be very hard for Lions to run away from when he's in with that slot. Uh, very true in bottom lane. I mean, S4, after what was such a solid start with the way that he was able to play around the map, get the, uh, you know, the, the tier ones as early as he did with the pressure, uh, his game has just taken a massive hit at this stage. Yeah, Timbersaw, he's Feast or Famine. He's either unkillable or he's a pinata because he's used to be unkillable and now you just feed off, feed off of the game inside. I, I look at this overwhelming blink from tiny and i actually asked myself what would be like a better item oh, what, oh my what does tiny need to do his job in this game i can't really think of anything he's just going to be a blink combo anyway so I might as well make that blink combo that much more potent as it's now an aoe slow and it also does at this point Dyer's about 30 damage ah so that's a fair amount and then of course adding into the extra bit of damage he's gonna have with the punch thanks to the strength and that general tankiness i mean it all checks out uh, a very nice hero take to put this item on and uh yeah that the slow as, as you say i mean it's, it's, it's a very strong slow six seconds slow. mid lane tops are coming in onto the two of them as you can see hansken he's gonna really struggle to run away from this sort of initiation now Anytime the Thompson's in with the overwhelming blink, you cannot run. Radiant's top tower is under attack. That will be a, a free kill here for, for the side of Blood. Why I say that, Thompson's going to come in with the counter plan. Nico maybe has to put the BKB and run away. First charge down, and he's having to, to use it to retreat. S4. He's been found in the tree. He's trying to get his way out of there, but there's just so much damage in that middle with a full Daedalus. At 27 minutes in, he's ready to start kicking out those 1k crits. Yeah, this is when Ricky looks absolutely disgustingly broken. <laughs> he's this far ahead with these items uh, against these fragile heroes coming out from Alliance. Really high win rate against Nyx and Pub, by the way, guys, if you're having some trouble with Nyx. Really hard Radiant's to stun somebody who's invulnerable during attack. the damage that they deal with. Dyer's bottom tower is <laughs> See if they can get in the want. I don't think they're going to be uh, trying it for a second time. Right it's probably the last time mid one hits a building this game. Probably what he realizes there. Kind of the nature of Ricky. The hero's kit is all about the informational advantage that he gains by being invisible and then being able to jump you, so that is very counterintuitive to hitting buildings. But he had the Aegis there, so it's not like he lost anything major. Back to farming. Very juicy rune as well. Look at the setup here on to mid one. With the stun and this crits for there this time in the hands of Nico Baby as they take down mid one. See what more they can get from this Nico Baby over towards Saxa. They'll get a second. Alliance, can they get more from this? They're trying to chase down Scott. He comes out of the split. Nico Baby's ready to jump over and find.
finally, Alliance able to get the team fight in the way that they hoped for. Enabling Nico, baby, allowing him to go from target to target and starting things off by taking down that record. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. There's no way you're farming your way back into this game for Alliance. It's really Radiance good move by them. Tower is under I love watching it. Uh, like I said, I'm just I'm skeptical of what the PA's items were in terms of the timing but this is exactly what they flourish at and despite being down they have identified exactly what they need to do to win this game and i always trust they know better so, uh, i love to watched. watch it i love uh, the fact that fng is going these Dyer's nice enabling items he's basically giving his pa extra net worth he's got drums he's got a solar he's going a soul cure ass after that uh, this is just effectively giving nico baby an item or two comes to that carry to carry matchup as the game goes on, that can definitely tilt the balance in Nico Baby's favor, even if Ricky is higher network. And, and yeah, fan of this, we're seeing it first start of the patch, this patch as well, you know, No-Tail getting the bots nice and early on his Shadow Demon. Of course, yeah. yeah. Just a normal <laughs> Just Boots of Travel Shadow Demon yep. timing, yeah. I think Boots of Travel can offer so many things to different heroes. Uh, one of which can be like split pushing away from your team. I think in the case of Shadow Demon, it's that he can show up to fights and ganks because he's like that crucial plus one to offer that extra damage. Thompson. 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 I've got to be cautious though. Thompson has this DD ready to go for the next shot. He's going to pop it now. <laughs> they want to try and find this set. The split. As Lions themselves. To separate. To be careful if he stays here, but he's out with a blink. Off to the side. OG try and turn their efforts towards S4, but he's put underneath the tier two. Actually thinking about chasing back in on this. Dust still out onto oh, mid. Mana burn stolen. That's super annoying for us. You gotta love the entering the carries mindset from mid one. He had the Aegis and he queued up the butterfly. Dies with the Aegis, then dies afterwards. Uh, yeah. Suddenly the BKB. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm gonna need one of those. We've all been there, I'm sure. Is that, do you usually buy a BKB after your third battle for your own, or what do you usually go for? Uh, I, I usually buy it in the next game. Oh, of course. Of course. You see a little bit of the Radiant's old uh, bottom tower oh, under under out here from FNG. Instantly put to a start. Yeah, I think what, what No Tail is doing with the boots of travel is that somebody at all stages of the game is going to have to deal with this annoying split push. And honestly, nobody else really wants to. Tiny wants to be ganking. Ricky wants to be farming while looking to be the plus one. Brewmaster is the frontline team fight. So he's probably the best candidate. Honestly enough. He's there with the response. They lose no tail, but mid one. He's allowed to stand up straight in onto FNG with a tricky trade. He gets the crit. Takes down the prophet. He's your Monica Lip for Link committee with the BKB. He's got the catch. Onto the Ricky. Nico Baby's there with the ball. Another crit in. As Nico Baby takes down mid one. I mean, mid one's down for 80 seconds. Alliance, they are pulling these fights out effortlessly now. Uh, despite this period of the game where mid one's farm was starting to get ahead. They are, they're, they're controlling and killing the Ricky. This is a, a huge amount of time. Ricky's out of the game. Ricky Elias is going to be able to put a huge amount of pressure onto the base. Stops it. Don't buy back on him either. I mean, all the tier twos have been taken. Uh, they've got a lot of space to last to at least take one set of racks. Uh, maybe even more with the fact that these buybacks aren't up. Yeah, this is, uh, I always say I'm either right or I'm learning. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is just, you know, it, it, it's clear now that this is the plan that Alliance had all along. They were just playing for this 30 minutes, group up and go. It didn't matter if Farm was going to be there on mid one. They they felt confident in the initiation. We see pretty much each time, you know, Limp and Hamster, they've been getting that opening onto the Ricky, whether it be the Remnant or the Impale. And it's just ruined mid one's game. It's been irrelevant how much Farm he's had on him because they're, they're, they're just blowing him up throughout the durations of the stuns that they have.
Yeah, it might be a bit of overconfidence for a mid one to go for the Daedalus before BKB. Maybe like casual for Stalos before BKB. There's so many small mistakes that you can make in the game of Dota. And sometimes they just snowball into oblivion as he's probably needed a BKB for the last two or three team fights now. As you said, Alliance has chain stunned him perfectly with the Ags, Void Spirit, as well as the Impale from the Knicks. And PA represents the damage you need to kill him, and that's why this matchup is so good for PA. And uh, I just, he, you end up taking the blur evasion on Nico Baby, so Ricky literally doesn't touch him. He's got 80% of it. When this smoke move, they can catch one of the big boys. They can find Toxin. They do. There's the open. Nico Baby getting the bash straight up. The four ups there. Toxin, he needs help. Is he going to get in time? No, they're nailing on it. They can't save Toxin. <laughs> As out for, for 80 seconds again. Alliance just blowing this game right up. And now 7k lead for the DD rune pops on Nico Baby. He can really start to continue to keep this pressure on. I mean, it's pressure on OG. But I, I don't think they're going to be scared of too much. They'll look to take the Roche with this DD. Heading over to the pit. But uh, uh, OG, I mean, they've just taken huge hits now. And the last five minutes of play. And uh, I think they're going to be pretty shaken up by all of this. I think they have to get an MKB or a Rapier on mid one. It looks like they're going to let that just contest the agents. So quickly, though. I've got to get it. I don't think they're going to be able to get it soon enough. The damage from Nico, baby. He's taking it down. Quickly. He's got it. There's the Aegis there outside of the pit. They do lose limb. It's the first combo comes into play. Hands get over the beautiful stun on the two of them. The setup there on to no tail. Stolen in power. Coming back here. Will towards the death of Hans get. See what Nico be like. He's been up. He's jumping over. He's been able to find the first target. No tail. Now he turns up the one. Big one popping the BKB. But he's having a run with his BKB. He's trying to get out of here. Steph comes to a finish with the split. Remnant out, controlling it. Midbot's trying to get back him, but the trick's the He got enough damage to kill Nico Baby. Nico Baby getting low, but the BKB is still good to go. As they've got a backup, they can't even kill Nico Baby. Once hit, as they have to get back into position to protect their ass. Super durable on Alliance's side. All that blur evasion, the temper saw, and FMG doing exactly what Nature's Prophet does best. It's even better when it's just a five position. You do the same thing <laughs> as a core Nature's Prophet would, maybe a bit slower, but uh, every time, every fight, they're on a timer on the side of OG. And this is just kind of Ricky. Snowball, the nature of snowballing heroes, man. You either kill everybody in one second, or they end up being durable enough to not die at all. Queuing up the rapier, he knows he needs it. They're out this game. Yeah. Especially yeah, with this AC style of crest build from FNG, has you know perfect <laughs> to have alongside with this PA. Uh, and a PA now with the AGs complete. So it's gonna be even harder to control in these fights. Yeah, PA is always also good against Ricky because Ricky feeds the information game. He wants to jump you, and the Ags, Nico Baby, shows he truly understands this matchup. It's obviously going to buy anyway, but... He's, he's going in on S4. There's a lot of backup here for S4. Midbot, he's got to get on the retreat. Tops is ever getting the combo on the two of them. As he's found that the long point to choose BKB, he's going to be fine. Silence on to Nico Shine Baby. Nico Baby trying to run. The stun's there from the phone. Can't get finishing the once. He can't. Nico Baby's still fine and good to go. Midbot has to use the BKB to retreat. The stun comes out. They burst through the Aegis of Nico Baby. They also find the life of Manskin. Can they kill Nico Baby a second time? As he's standing to the side, still has the backup of Limp, FNG, and S4. Alliance. Still has BKB. They still seem happy to go in on this Limp. He's dying, he's on the top of it. That is Limp down for 100 seconds. Now Nico Baby makes it commit. In off the step. That's going to be the crew down. Now coming to BKB. Time to the A buyback comes out for a second. He cannot get in position to save Thompson in time as Thompson is down. They have caught S4 on the high ground as S4 not quite able to make the back count as easy as Nico Baby did. So S4 will get left behind here. Chase from Saxa. Bonnie further set up onto FNG as OG looks to try and get as much as they can off this defense, but they won't be able to stop the TP out. The Muffet's away. Nico Baby's back in. Yeah. The on he lies the Ricky. Saxa's got to go step to save himself. Middle barracks have fallen. But Nico Radiance Baby just weaving perfectly in and out of these fights. As he's just in again. He is diving into their fours. They do have the stun control. Wait, he's got a cooldown on the BKB. Oh, I mean, I guess they're weaving perfectly in and out of the fight. And they have indeed got what they
what they came for. I don't think he's going to be too close with being dead for 90 seconds. He may not have buyback, but how much can OG do about this? Up against the Mega Creeps here at 39 minutes. Alliance, they are, they're definitely tasting the victory here in this game. It's, it feels very close to them if they can keep this up for one more fight and just push over OG over the edge. Oh, it was so crucial that mid one survived that fight. He, like he, his buyback here cost him so much time on his rapier because I thought that was going to be the hardest hold for OG to get past. But the only reason that it was going to be the hardest one was because if mid one survives, he'll have a rapier for the next one. And uh, that is their timing for OG. They have to somehow keep this game going for long enough to make that happen. This game has been a wild back and forth. Every single time I think one team's favored to win the game, the other team seems to w take the reins. So uh, I almost have to believe at this stage that I would favor OG based on my interpretation of this game so far. <laughs> I mean, OG's definitely got to do something pretty wild to come back Dyer's into this one right now. Tower is under attack. Yes, so they're on the probability 6% here for OG, 94 for Alliance, considering how well Alliance has done here in this, in all of these fights, and, and how, how well Nico Baby's just popped off with this, this, this build, and, and in, a, in a way that, you know, regardless of the farm that mid one had early on, mid one still very much a vulnerability. If one of these carries gets caught out, it could be too much game for each team. As up top, Thompson, he's caught out alone. And again, no buyback Dyer's still. Under Just attack. a little short on the goal. 40 gold short of the buyback here, Thompson. The they're going to try and chase for more S4. Leading in. Pokes out a response from Midbon. Midbon actually jumped it up with a small piece. Pico then he's prepared with the dice. Midbon trying to hide in the trees. Just to move. The Clifford with the tricks to trade. He'll be able to get out of there. There'll be a buyback from Stacks. There's Seb committing for the split. Well, Seb can chase down. He's trying to go in on to S4, but with the hood in the, the bloodstone, S4 is fine. Bottom lane, FNG going for the split pressure. OG, they'll be able to punish it. As F FNG caught on his own. They'll find themselves the kill. You, my friend, got Such a tall ass for OG here. They have to push lanes against Nature's Prophet, Negas, find the big opportunity to the game, and they can go. They only are wrangled back into their base. Oh, see mid-bomb. Trying to start the action here with Seb. Uh, as Lip, oh, he's straight in off the back line. He's trying to get to the stack phase. Never burst him down over the stage. Comes in. The disruption just takes a bit of time. The hat spin has the impel to follow it up. Oh, Lip. Lip is dead, Radiant's though. Damage is enough here from Lip. Into the trees, they'll find Hansken as well. The crowd is down. Hansken, has he got any means of escape? He's trying. He's running through the trees. But they're on top of him once more. The trip to the will do it. 1,300 gold for that rapier. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. You get that, 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 that gem under their control. I mean, I mean, once he has the rapier, I mean, how hard is it going to be for Alliance to push into it? Like, do OG realistically have this chance to swing this game round with that rapier? The big thing is that PA and BKB right now is invincible. But once he gets the rapier that's not the case anymore. so it will affect a lot about pa's ability to actually dish out dish out damage in the fight because nico baby will have to be much more selective about when he goes in and uh yeah i i don't really know how og consistently gets out on the map unless they kill heroes so if alliance doesn't really fight into them i don't know how they get out but i also don't know how alliance goes high ground now uh, unless they kill og it's definitely a matter of who can get the initiation on the who around the map. As Ricky, as he scales into the game, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So obnoxious to deal with because you just can't see him, and suddenly you're dead. As he now hits for <laughs> almost 600 damage, ignoring backstab. All right. I mean, they're up against the Megazord. Yeah, he's got ninja gear. That's actually even more annoying. God, this game would be so annoying to play. <laughs> You're dealing with an Axe PA, uh, still pushing Nature's Prophet with Ninja Gear, and a Ricky with a Rapier. I don't know. Very enjoyable to watch, but yeah. I don't envy the people that have to play against this. No, this is this is certainly a good one. As Alliance, you know, it's, it's, the, the fact that they have these mechas, they can seem on the verge of victory, but it's, it's only 5K between them, and this Ricky with the Rapier is uh it could definitely be a problem it's going to be all down to the execution right now right. 
level 25. Three toss charges in OG this time around could give Alliance a, a pretty formidable fight around the pit, and Alliance know it. They're, they're a little cautious on how they commit for this. They know that OG's going to come in and try and make the jump. And, and there it is. OG's going to start things off. He's coming in with the BKB there, the catch out, take down Stratford. By Carapace, set up onto Seth, with CS4 running towards the back lines, trying to split OG. Oh, oh, Jumps over the BKB, coming out from Nico Baby as Nico Baby's out of the tricks of the trade. He's on the tree. Carapace set up onto Seth, with CS4 running towards the back lines, trying to split OG apart. Tommy, 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 jumps over the BKB, coming out from Nico Baby, as Nico Baby's out of the tricks of the trade. He's on the tree. Nico's looking for a target to chase the double kill. See what S4 could do to put a stop to this. Mid one's actually keeping out. He's got to defend the base. He has to get back to the tier fours. Steph getting run down by S4. And Steph getting step away from this. Another Yule's out by the time for Lip to close the gap. In with the remnant. Step down for two minutes. Mid one's out on the map. He's got the silence off the Lip. Lip getting taken out. The crits come into play. Mid one gets the kill. And then fly back immediately. He's already in with a bit of fast control. But Mid one's still got the BKB. Good to go. So the Avalanche drop down. On the chase. He's over towards S4. S4 chaining out the side. And then we get with the trick of the trade, that's PA down and out. A die back on Nico, baby. Move on just tearing them apart here with the Rapier. Oh my goodness. I mean, Brian, there's two heroes down for two minutes. How much can OG Radiant's get done with this? Has been killed. <laughs> I, I don't know if they can get anything done. Uh, that's the thing. Like, how do you get out of your base? Yeah. I guess Nick's is dead now, but they, you're still dealing with Nick, so nobody can go alone. I mean, uh, anybody is susceptible. Uh, uh, Brian. Mid one actually elects to carry the gym. Okay, never mind. He uh, dropped out. Here's the reason why I And, uh, and, and, and yeah, mid one, talk about big brain stuff. Do you like this? Queuing up an arcane blink so he's got that extra spam ability on his spells. Yeah, it's not just the spam ability, it's also the reach you have. Yeah. I mean, you're able to follow up your, your tops and combo from a long, much further distance. We've seen it before. I think in China region, they go for this arcane blink. I think it was. Uh, I can't even remember who did it first, but, or, uh, Ame, Ame was doing it. It's pretty cool. It also lowers the cast point on Tricks of the Trade, which can sometimes be the difference maker when you're dealing with some and first damage from Nyx. Now OG, they're, they're over to the pit. Bags on Shatter Demon as well. Yeah. So suddenly that break that the panel was talking about during the draft is coming into play. I think there's a lot against PA too. Uh, I mean, I don't know, Baby's gonna struggle in these fights. Rapier for the damage threat, and uh, Rape for the inability for him to deal damage. I mean, they've, they've got to find mid one, right? If you don't catch this Ricky at the start of the fights, mid one's just going to clean up every single time. And as we've seen, I'm the invisible guy, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. I mean, as you said, you know, you mentioned earlier, obviously, OG, it's not necessarily easy for them to find the PA, uh, but uh, definitely more difficult for Alliance to find the Ricky, uh, as long as mid one is able to keep himself to the side and uh, be truly confident in uh, his whereabouts of Alliance's hero positioning before he commits in. We're going for the Roche. Alliance start all back up. They're going to take this Roche down pretty quickly with that Rapier damage. It has to be quick as the lanes are pushing in. Yeah, just scouting things out with the Wind Panda. Able to hold people back as well. They're going to be able to get this cleaned up. Uh, who's taking what? Thompson? He's going to take the axe. Uh, now they're taking it. They're going to catch on the West Ball. Lift jumping into the BKB. Trying to help out. And then they both mad that the base is dying though. Tier 4s are falling. If Alliance can just want to keep OG out here and distract him, the Treants might just do it. The first tier 4 down, the second tier 4 down as well. As OG, they may be getting the kills, but they've got to get back. FNG's in, he's looking to close this yeah. round. The Treants are doing it. FNG's going to be around the game. He's got it. Surely Dr. Shaw is going to hold the the Treants that finished it.